Hey everyone, welcome to Pawfology. So right now I'm on my way to Caffeine Coffee and I'm just gonna get a cup of coffee. So I'm on my lunch break. I just had some lunch and it was good. Oh, can it follow me? And I got about 20 minutes left, so I'm just gonna come over here, get some coffee and go back to work. So it's been a fairly good Monday. Are you having a good day? I hope you are. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm walking by Cunningham Group right now. I've mentioned it before in my vlogs, but they're a restaurant corporation. They own a bunch of restaurants. Not, I don't think it's just in Indiana, but they own a lot of the nicer restaurants in Indiana. Uh, like Livery, which is just down the road. It's kind of a Latin restaurant. And then they own Vita, which is right now probably one of the better, rush, if not the best restaurant. I think it's the only five-star diamond or something restaurant in Indy. So I've never been there. I'd love to go there. And yeah, you know something interesting? Uh, I'm just in this alleyway. No one around? Okay. Something interesting uh, that I learned this week about restaurants is um, Elon Musk's brother. Oh, sorry, everyone. This is going not going great. So Elon Musk's brother, Elon Musk's, anyways, Elon's brother owns two restaurants in Indy. They're both closed right now just due to uh, the pandemic, but he owns Hedge Row, which is on, I think it's on Mass Ave. I didn't know I didn't know that. So he owns that restaurant. Then he owns some other restaurant I can't think the name of, but eh, interesting. <clears throat> I think his brother is a part of a, a restaurant group, kind of like Cunningham. They own a few restaurants around Indy, Dallas, I think, and some other places. So yeah, I would like to go there too. So I've been watching uh, Tiger Woods' new documentary on HBO. I don't know when it came out. I think it might have just came out yesterday, but uh, it's been really good. I'm only 40 minutes in. I think there's another 40 minutes left or 30, yeah, 40 minutes maybe. But anyways, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, it's been good so far. And then a part two is coming out tomorrow. Have any of you watched it so far or do you plan on watching it? I'm not a big sports person, but yeah, it's interesting, you know? interesting to hear about Tiger's life, how much he trained. I mean, he was basically bred into coffee, coffee, bred into golf. So I'm really thankful my parents did not uh, push me that hard, you know, in a sport. I played sports. I played soccer and baseball. And then in fifth and sixth grade, I played uh, football. So that was fun. But sports were always just a fun thing to do. They were never, you know, super intense. I never had a special coach. I played with a lot of people that were way better than me that had, you know, pitching coaches, hitting coaches, whatever, whatever. Like they would do it to get into college. And some of them, you know, probably, I think everyone that did that, especially at the high school level, they did play in college. So, but I don't know if they played at any good, good schools. So, but yeah, okay, well, I'm here at Caffeine Coffee. There, uh, so this area is pretty cool. It's, it's like a warehouse or old warehouse or shipping dock. And there's a few companies in here. Cir Circuit Indy. I don't know what else is in here. I know there's this, um, there's like a workout area. Maybe that's what that is, though. So, and then there's a storage area down there. Okay, I'm going in. Oh, excuse, excuse me. me. Sorry. Thank you. Hey everyone. So I just got into caffeine coffee. If you're still watching, comment down below pretzel. Like the pastry that can sometimes be crunchy or it could also be chewy depending where you get it. Pretzel. Yeah. Well, best of luck, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Have a good day. Me. Yep, see ya. Okay, so I'm back. 
I just got my coffee and I talked to the coffee barista for a long time. He was asking me about my camera. He was super nice. He also does film. Very interesting. He has a Nikon D5, some, D55, I don't know, D something. Anyways, so he was talking to me about this camera. Very cool, very cool guy. So he has, he was mentioning like, you know, the camera he has and what he does with film. Very cool, very nice guy. Um, he was asking me about my camera and I was just telling him what it was. And I use a DJI Pocket. And I say it's a really good camera. I mean, for what it is, I especially for what I do, I didn't want to buy a thousand dollar camera. This camera was, I don't know, hundred something dollars. So, and it, it just has been awesome, especially for what I do. You know, if I if I were to buy an expensive camera, I would feel like I would have to post content that was equivalent to that thousand dollar camera, and I just. I don't think I can do that. And I don't like the pressure of that. But for this setup, I'm like, eh, it's, it does what I need it to do. So, and it's not the pressure of using this, you know, a really expensive camera. So I really like this camera it's, and it's pretty amazing. It's, it's worked well so far. I'm pretty amazed I have not broke it because it's only, it's literally only six or seven inches tall. So, and it's really skinny. So, but now I'm on my way back. I think I was talking about the Tiger documentary. It's pretty good. I'm excited to finish it. What else? Oh, I applied for my program. I hope I can get in. Oh, it's snowing. It's snowing right now. Oh, there's a car coming. Hold on. Okay, so I applied to my program uh, last night. I finished everything. I turned in my essay. I turned in my transcripts. I, you know, did everything I needed to do. Got my boss recommend, sent in a recommendation, so that was awesome. He did it this morning, so wow. So I got everything in. I don't know if I'll get in. I kind of, I might get in. I, it's kind of a long shot. So I applied for my, essentially my dream program, uh, just to see what would happen. So I have another program that I might apply, I definitely will apply for if I don't get into this one. Um, so yeah. I'm trying to get into the Kelly School of Business, so we'll see. Well, I'm about to go inside. I'll see you very soon. I'm gonna turn this off, or maybe I'll just cut it off right here and just keep filming, because I can't turn it off, because uh, I got gloves on. I'm wearing the gloves Emily got me. Very nice and warm. Okay, now I am going. I'll talk to you very soon, bye. Hey everyone, so I'm back in the apartment. I just came in from outside. It's been fairly cold. I think it's 30 degrees out or 20, it's 25, 25 to 30. So pretty cold out today, but not as cold as probably Illinois, um, especially with the wind chill in Illinois, but very cold for me. And, but it was a good walk. It was good to get out and move around and not be stuck inside all day. So, and to talk to someone, that was cool. Talk to the barista. Really nice guy. Um, I guess my, uh, my, so here's something I've been thinking. I've been to a lot of coffee shops in the past year and I gave caffeine coffee a second try or third try. And it's, it, you know, coffee shops are so reliant on the barista. It's most of the time probably. You know, it's, it just depends on if that barista knows how to make and use that machine, in my opinion. Do they know how to pull a good shot? And do they know how to steam the milk right if you're getting like a latte or whatever? So, because that was a good experience. My first experience there was not good. The coffee was not good. But ever since I've been back, it's been great. Granted, I normally get very basic things I think the first time I went there, I had some specialty coffee and really those coffees, unless you're a long-term barista or the owner, it's, it's probably really hard to always make those exactly how they're intended to be made. So, okay, what else was I thinking about? Um, so I was talking about Tiger Woods and it got me thinking about uh, sports. I'm glad I didn't have the complex 
uh, childhood that probably Tiger went through, and it got me thinking about golf. I talked to someone this weekend that went to this golf course. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Crooked Stick. It's in, I think it's in Carmel, which is about 30 or minutes away from here. Very ritzy part of uh, town. Um, the most roundabouts in the world, I think, or the, like the city with the most roundabouts in America. It is ridiculous. Every time I go there, even parts of Fisher, I'm like, please, I hate these roundabouts. I'm going to literally get in a wreck. I'm, I'm surprised more people do not get in wrecks. The roundabouts, if you ever come through Indy, Carmel, Fisher area, good luck. So all that to say, I was talking to someone who went to Crooked Creek, Crooked Creek, Cripple Creek, Crooked Stick. Went to Crooked Stick Golf Course. And um, if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a famous golf course. Um, you know, PGA Tour is there. I don't really know what exactly, why it's such a big deal, but it's just a big deal. And like Peyton Manning's there. A lot of really, really rich people go there. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. This, for example, the initiation fee is anywhere between 39,000 and 50,000. And then after that you pay like 500 a month, 450 a month to golf there. Which even, even after that, you probably have to pay to golf. It's more of just the club fee is $400, whatever month. So anyways, I think, okay, here's my deal. I think it would be pretty cool to go there. Um, just because it's iconic. I really like John Daly. I don't really like golf. I know John Daly is not the greatest person in the world, but I just like his style. I think he's hilarious. I love his 30 for 30 on ESPN. He's just such a unique character. And he's he's the original uh, Happy Madison. Is that, is that what it's called? Happy Madison? You know the movie with Adam Sandler and he is a hockey player, but he's a, he goes into becomes a golf player? Okay. Essentially, that movie is based off John Daly in a lot of ways because John Daly was this golfer who like, was just a rebel. He smoked cigarettes and drank Diet Coke and just didn't care. But he And he has an amazing talent, and he's, he's really good, but he kind of is not – well, he's not healthy at all, but he's still – or he was really good. So very interesting character. And he won his championship at Crooked Creek, Crooked Stick. I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep saying it wrong. The golf course. So it's kind of a big deal. And Peyton Manning plays there. And a lot, like, tons of rich people from all around the world play there or have a locker there. So very interesting. I would love to go there just to say I've been there. I don't think I would ever play golf there because I would destroy the golf course and that would be bad. But, hey, it would be cool to go there, you know? One time, I went to a golf match. Don't remember who played. My mind is saying that Tiger played, but Chris, you can tell me. I don't really know. I don't really know. But I know some famous people played. I think it was the BMW Tour, BMW PGA game, something. It was very, very what you would imagine a golf tournament would be. It's like just tons of rich people and... There's BMW. I mean, this one was a BMW place. So there were BMWs everywhere. It was, it was interesting. It's not like a NASCAR. I grew up going to NASCAR races. Not like that at all. It's uh, very much more classy. So, But I did, I did enjoy going to NASCAR races. Though I don't like NASCAR add too, so much to watch it, I do actually really like NASCAR. Like I have a NASCAR game that I play on my computer once in a blue moon. So... And it's, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting entertainment business. You know, I don't think, uh, you know, NASCAR, it's, some people are going to completely disagree, but in a lot of ways to me, it's kind of like wrestling where it's a lot more entertainment than actually racing. And it's very Americanized, but I'm sure the races are real. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. No, they're real. Maybe. Anyways, you know, you have you, versus compared to your real racing, you know, Indy 500 style racing, 
it's very different. But I did I did enjoy it when I was a kid. My dad loves going to NASCAR races. I grew up going to Bristol every year. Very fun. Very cool. Martinsville, uh, often. So, which I think Martinsville is just a truck race. You know, no, there's NASCAR there too. So, but very cool. I mean, it was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the, the area outside the NASCAR race. Um, I do remember though, everything was super expensive. And there is this game where it's like little cars and you just hold a button down and you race. It costs like $20 to do. And every time your car crashes, which it will crash, it costs like $5. And I felt, I was like, oh no, I accidentally just spent $25. I was a kid. So, and I think my dad did it for me, but I felt guilty spending that much money, which it wasn't a big deal. I mean, like it was, I only did it once, so, but it was expensive. I, and I also remember, at least at Bristol, it was a lot like a flea market. It may not be like that now, but when I went there, it was like a, like anything goes, you can sell literally anything there. So I think, oh, sorry, I touched the mic. Yeah. Very interesting. I remember we would uh, park at this church and then they would take a bus from the church to the Bristol racetrack. That was convenient. I would not want to drive to the racetrack. It was fun though. I really, those were some good memories. I love doing that with my dad. I love doing that with, uh, sometimes my uncle would come. Sometimes other people would go. It was cool. I liked it. Great memories. So, well, I think that's all for today. Emily and I will be back tomorrow. I don't fully know what we'll talk about. I think we'll share a little bit about what we got for Christmas, um, just some stuff. I might have said this already. I did apply for my program. I got that all finished. Thank, thanks, very thankful for that. Um, also, just I just wanna say again, I've said this many times before too, but thank you so much for all your comments. Thank you to the people that are commenting on every video. Uh, thank you to everyone who's just watching them. I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna try to keep doing this every day for the next year. Um, it's gonna be a challenge, but I feel like every day or every week, I learn something new that is helpful. And also vlogging, I just, I really enjoy it. I love looking back at the vlogs. I love learning how to vlog. So I really enjoyed it. And just thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. And just thank you for being so nice to me and Emily. We really do appreciate it, so thanks. Um, well, if no one's told you this today, you are loved and this world is a better place because you are here. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.